finally for now, Digital Democracy Update. Um, well, we did a pilot, you may or may not have seen, using a platform called Your Priorities that Nigel told us about, uh, that was developed in Iceland and the uh, Reykjavik local government use it to let the community um, make decisions and actually apportion budgets to things that need doing. So it's real direct democracy in Reykjavik. And we thought we'd give it a go um, with the peninsula plans of the council comparing their vision to our shared vision and the the uh, intention what we would consider a success when we did it was whether we would get more votes or more engagements with the concept or with the plans than the council did over months and in a week we got or just over a week, couple of weeks maybe, 3,194 users of the page. I mean, the, 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 the stuff we sent out, the posts from our Facebook page and Twitter and stuff like that had, you know, thousands. But but the actual actual people who went there and we captured data from using analytics, 3,194 to date, 35% of those registered to vote, which is really, really high which is great. That means we've got 1, 1,141 people who will vote online about stuff like this. And out of those, 771 were against the council's vision and 1,019 were for our vision, only five against and only 13 for the council. So, you know, the council got 900 responses 52% they said they that were in favour. That's 468. So we more than more than doubled the number of people saying they wanted they, they preferred our vision to the councils, and we got more people against the council's vision uh, for the peninsula than they had in favour of it. So we've told the council uh, that we don't think they have a public mandate for the plans as they exist. We've asked certain questions. They've said that everything can change in these plans, but we've asked more questions, more detailed questions, and they haven't responded to those yet because we're worried that they put so much detail in the plans for the peninsula that when it goes through as an outline, what happen, what can happen is the outline can become the full planning application. <coughs> and a sneaky way sometimes is to put lots of detail in the outline then it becomes the full planning application then you can't reverse it they've assured us that's not the case i should say but we are vigilant and um you know we we really feel that 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 this is this this kind of rattled them a bit and they they don't like the idea of everyone having a vote and getting all of the information together in one place and yes or knowing but this is the way things are going in the world and we might as well get on the bus now. That's how we feel. And if we're responsible and we do it um, properly, it should be fine. And the council are going to have to learn in the future to live with things like this. And, and we can help them. We can save them the anxiety of building stuff, creating stuff, spending weeks on stuff, which is what they've said. Oh, we've spent years doing this and then having it thrown back in their faces. That doesn't help anyone, and it's a waste of money, and we want to try and stop that. So, that pilot we think worked. Have a chat amongst yourselves today and see what you think, whether you thought it was good or whether it wasn't, and whether we should do it again. I personally think we should do it again with another issue or with a development of the Peninsula issue because we've got all these people who've now registered to vote, and we can take it forward and use it to apply pressure and get information on other important matters for the town. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good meeting.